Hello everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. So guys, as you all know that we have launched the live courses for RBS Seven Nabard. You have the timetable in front of you. If you want to know more about the courses, you can go to the application or to the website. These are the crash courses that we have launched for the Nabard uh, Grade Twenty Twenty Two. If you want to know more about it, uh, you can do so through the app and the website. Okay, and I hope that all of you must have downloaded the PDF of this session by now. Therefore, I'm beginning with the first question. So the first question is which company has developed Varun, India's first passenger drone. So pay attention to the word passenger drone. Usually we had unman unmanned uh, vehicles, aerial vehicles, uh, which are shorter in size, and those vehicles are called drones. Now we are developing a drone that would be able to have humans in them. Okay, that would be a passenger drone. So, which company has developed it? Or basically, the prototype of it has been developed. Now, the development will take place. So, it is Sagar Defense Engineering. Okay. So, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has unveiled this uh, passenger drone, which is being developed by the Sagar Defense Engineering in partnership with Naval Technology Development Acceleration Cell. Okay. Next question is which company is funding NASCOM's Digivani call center? So here guys, Google is the right answer. Google is funding this call center. Now it is actually a call center that would help the rural women entrepreneurs which are majorly engaged in agriculture, but obviously. So these women entrepreneurs, irrespective of the field they are engaged in, be it the agriculture or non-agriculture field, if they are rural women and entrepreneurs, they would get the help on this Digivani call center. Now, what kind of help? Basically, whatever the uh, schemes, government schemes, and whatever the initiatives are there, which can help those women, that information would be provided by this call center to the uh, beneficiaries. Okay, so that is the basic idea. And obviously, information would help these rural women to scale up their business. So that is the basic idea. Now, it has been launched on a pilot basis uh, across six states, which you can see. And it would be really helpful for all of you if you can remember the names of the states. Okay. And initially, the target is to cover 20,000 rural women entrepreneurs. And uh, I have already told you that the purpose of it would be providing the uh, information to the women entrepreneurs. Uh, and remember that this initiative is funded by Google.org. This is the philanthropic arm of the Google. Okay. Okay. So we are on the third question. Which of the following organization is the latest to join the coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure? So here the right answer is option A, European Investment Bank. Now, before moving into the, into the details, I am throwing a question on you. And my question is, tell me that in which summit did Prime Minister launch CDRI? CDRI was launched in 2019. You just need to tell me the name of the summit during which this announcement or this initiative was launched. Okay. I hope you all know the basic purpose. The basic purpose is evident from its name itself. That is to build the capacities of the countries against disasters okay to create the infrastructure which is resilient to the disaster so that the loss to the property and the life can be minimized now the member countries of it so firstly you can see on the map the countries which are the members of this organization and here we have the list of the organizations which are the members okay so not only the countries, we have individual separate organizations as the member of CDR. So ADB, World Bank, UNDP, uh, UNDRR, that is Disaster Risk Reduction, Private Sector Alliance for Disaster Resilient Societies, Coalition for Climate Resilient Infrastructure uh, Investment, European Union, and now European Union's Bank, European Investment Bank. So these organizations have joined. CDR. Now, next question is which airport is being developed as India's first carbon neutral airport? So here, Leh Airport in Ladakh is the right answer. 
which of the following commission has recently submitted its report to Supreme Court regarding the reservation of OBCs in the local bodies elections in Maharashtra. So here guys, Jayant Kumar Banthia Commission is the right answer. And remember, Jayant Kumar Banthia has served as the Chief Secretary of the State of Maharashtra. Okay. So he is the former Chief Secretary of Maharashtra and his commission has basically uh, uh, collected the data of the OBCs in the state of Maharashtra and it recommended that the number of OBCs are huge, thus they need a reservation in the local bodies uh, election. So what percentage of reservation has this commission recommended? So it is 27%. Okay. So that is all about this news. Which country will host the 10th, uh, 10th Asian India SOMTC consultation on transnational crimes in 2023? So here guys, Indonesia is the right answer. Right now, the ninth edition of this uh, meeting was held and it was held on a virtual mode. Okay. Uh, so it was chaired by India and Singapore. But remember, this year's summit or this year's chair of ASEAN is not Singapore, it is Cambodia, okay? And Cambodia is going to host the ASEAN 2022 summit in your October or November, okay? Dates are not confirmed and we don't have to do anything with the dates. So let's just skip that part. But remember that Cambodia is the location and the theme is ASEAN Act. Act stands for Addressing Challenges Together. So this is the 2022 Asian Summit theme, do remember. And the 10th edition of this Asian India SOMTC consultation on transnational crimes. This is basically a meeting wherein the leaders of Asian and India come together to discuss measures to tackle the crimes, okay, the transnational crimes. So it will be held in Indonesia in 2023. Next question is, what is the paid up capital requirement for the full scale digital business bank as per the Niti Ayo digital banks, a proposal for licensing and regulatory design for India report. So guys, this is a very recent report released by Niti Ayo that to a very hot topic that is digital banks. So you can definitely expect a question from this report either in your GA or in your ESI. Okay, so now our students do listen to me carefully. This is important. So as per this, Report 200 crores should be the paid up capital requirement for starting the full scale digital banks. Now, what does this report say? Let's discuss that. Okay, so here are the recommendations. First recommendation is that uh, there should be a restricted digital bank license. How? Now, listen to me. The recommendations that this report has given, those recommendations are not very conceptual in nature. Rather, they are very factual and directory in nature. They show the direction that do this, this, this. Okay. However, the underlying concepts are not very huge under this, uh, uh, in these recommendations. Therefore, don't try to mug up all that information. Don't try to uh, complex the things. Okay. Because these are very factual as you can see that. This report is saying that restricted digital bank licenses should be issued in order to have a strong regulatory environment, okay? Because if the number is huge, if we issue license to anybody without any, uh, compre without any concrete structure, then it would be very difficult to manage the digital banking units. Therefore, uh, this report has mentioned that uh, the licenses should be restricted. Now on that note, tell me in the union budget, how many digital banking units were announced by Nirmala Sitaram? This is your question. Okay, so I have discussed this first recommendation. Second is that the enlistment in a regulatory sandbox framework enacted by the Reserve Bank of India. Now what does it mean? Understand this point that these are the digital banking units, okay? So digital banks basically operate on a digital mode on a technological platform. So in order to test the technology, there needs to be a sandbox framework. So that framework should be regulated by RBI. This is the meaning of this second statement. The third one is that full scale digital bank license, um, which is uh, issue of a full scale digital bank license 
should be done then the satisfactory performance of the licensee in the regulatory sandbox is attained okay so including the salient prudential and technological risk management so the licensees the digital bank operators if they perform satisfactorily within this sandbox framework only then the full bank license would be issued to them that is what the third statement is saying now the methodology for giving the license how would rbi decide on what parameters would rbi decide that this company is performing better this is not okay so the methodology for that is based on an equally weighted digital bank regulatory index okay so basically there is a digital bank regulatory index prepared by rbi and it has four parameters first is entry barriers competition business restrictions technological neutrality so all these uh, parameters or factors would be taken into consideration and then this index will be prepared and the performance of the companies on this index will be uh, given will be assessed and on the basis of that license would, would be issued okay so the elements of these four these entry barrier competition business restriction and technological neutrality the pillars of this index the indicators of these pillars are derived from singapore hong kong uk malaysia australia and south korea because these countries are already having similar uh, framework so we have borrowed the indicators from these countries okay so it's a uh, you can say melting point of all those uh, frameworks that these countries are following okay now you need to know this fact okay that uh, this index is not prepared by rbi only it has been sourced from different countries now guys the minimum paid up capital requirement for digital business bank in order to enter into the sandbox framework is 20 crore then a full scale digital business bank the uh, paid up capital requirement for them is 200 crores okay and remember that this is the entry level capital requirement for small finance cap uh, small finance banks as well okay so how much loan has india received for the meghalaya eco tourism infrastructure development project so here the right answer is 70 79 million dollars now basically new development bank has approved five projects which have a total uh, cost of 875 dollars now these five projects are distributed among three countries brazil india and china so in brazil the new development bank would provide 300 million dollars and projects are water supply and sewage collection network in this state of brazil okay in india it is going to give this much amount for the meghalaya eco tourism infrastructure development project in china ndb is going to give 265 euros okay for the expansion of lanzhou uh, international airport and renminbi 805 million for the expansion of xian international airport okay so if you remember india's then it would be very very good for you because in my opinion the high chances of the question is from india only but but you never know the temperament of the examiner so here what can you do i know the names of these airports are really uh, tough to remember so you can just remember the first name because if you have a little bit of idea of the name it is very easy for all of you to mark the correct answer you have mcq in the examination so in my opinion that would help you in remembering the answer and marking it correctly okay the next question is how much loan is world bank providing for the himachal pradesh power sector development program so here 1600 crore is the right answer so guys the total cost of the project is 2000 crore 1600 crores are given by the world bank 400 would be contributed by the state government okay so the tenure for this project is 5 years and it is going to develop the power sector in the himachal pradesh so that is it what is the gdp forecast for india for 2022 to 23 by adb 
So here seven point two percent is the right answer. Guys, tell me. Recently, Ministry of uh, Minister of Finance Nirmala Sitaraman had said that India is on the track to achieve dash percent of GDP growth rate. Fill fill uh, fill the gap. Okay, you need to tell me the percentage of GDP growth that Nirmala Sitaraman had announced some, uh, you can say, weeks back. So this is your next question. Do mention it in the comment section. Okay, so for twenty twenty two to twenty three, seven point two percent. For twenty three to twenty four, seven point eight percent. Now remember, the decline has taken place. Eight percent was the earlier. forecast and now it has been reduced whereas the forecast for the inflation which is the cpi inflation it has been raised to 6.7% now what percentages do you need to remember only the latest ones okay 7.2 7.8 6.7 that would suffice okay so here guys this video ends i hope that you have liked the video if you have then uh share this among your friends and if you have any queries you can also mention it in the comment section below thank you so much guys for watching this video